An ATM Operators Association says that more than 1 lakh ATM counters could be shut down if uh, tighter rules recommended by the Reserve Bank of India are not amended. The Confederation of the ATM Industry claims that hardware and software upgrades mandated uh, coupled with new cash management standards uh, and cassette swap methods uh, could make the business unviable. Let's welcome in uh, K. Srinivas, uh, Director at uh, the Association, who's joining us on the phone line. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, sir. Uh, sir, firstly, can you tell us, uh, you know, what is bothering uh, the industry most because there are two or three different issues uh, one is uh, the cash logistic new norms that the RBI had suggested uh, the other is the upgrades that were required to ATM and at the backdrop of all of this perhaps uh, is that utility rates for ATMs are not growing as fast as it, they have in the past so essentially uh, there have been a couple of guidelines which uh, have come uh, via RBI as well as uh, Ministry of Home Affairs uh, regarding uh, the physical security of the cash movements, uh, which is, uh, they've suggested uh, usage of uh, uh, cassette swapping as a method of uh, reclamishing cash, uh, plus, of course, uh, uh, you know, the uh, increased security measures, the physical security measures, which obviously cost a lot of money, number one. And number two, there were also some uh, cyber security measures in the form of upgrade of the uh, operating systems, uh, as well as uh, 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 you know, implementation of uh, EMV and so on and so forth. Now, all these things do cost money. Now, uh, obviously, the operators who are actually expected to put up all these things uh, need to be compensated because uh, for the entire industry, uh, this actually costs us upwards of uh, anywhere around three and a half, four thousand crores. Uh, now, unless uh, you know, it is. Uh, uh, we, we get remunerated unless we get reimbursed uh, 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 of these costs through a mechanism of interchange increase. Uh, you know, it is obviously not going to be viable for the operators to be incurring these costs. Uh, so I think the, the industry's ask is to uh, relook at the interchange. Uh, the interchange rates, by the way, haven't gone up in the last five years. Uh, it's, been, it's been at 15 rupees for a cash transaction and 5 rupees for a non-cash non transaction for the last... Uh, five years while the costs have been continuously going up. I think our ask is if you, if you don't sort of find a mechanism of reimbursing the operators, uh, how are operators expected to bear these huge incremental costs? Okay, uh, let me separate some of these issues, sir, because I know they're getting clubbed together. Uh, for instance, if you look mm -hmm. at the, you know, the norms of uh, cash transit, you know, uh, the armed guard, etc., you know, that has to accompany that they have now put in place. Uh, also, this cassette swap thing that you have lockable cassettes as opposed to just replenishing existing cassettes. Doesn't, don't the banks bear this cost, sir? Yeah, there, there are two aspects of it. There are uh, ATMs which are actually, uh, which bank owns our bank outsources them to uh, third-party operators, uh, where the banks are turning around and then uh, telling the third-party operators that uh, this is your problem, this is something that you will need to comply because you signed a contract. Uh, obviously, banks are turning, up, turning out and then saying that uh, we got nothing to do with it. If you want to comply, go ahead and comply. So the banks are actually expecting the uh, MSPs to bear these costs. Uh, the second aspect is for uh, there is a segment of white-labeled ATM operators the white, white label ATM operators, uh, they don't work for any bank. I mean, they, 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 their only source of revenue is, is interchange. Now, if the interchange doesn't go up, there is no way of defraying these costs. Uh, so, therefore, it, it sort of affects both the parties because banks are taking a certain stance in one particular case. And in the case of white label ATM operators, they have no one to go. I mean, unless interchange goes up, there is no way that white label ATM operators can bear these costs and uh, continue to uh, roll out ATMs. Uh, in fact, that's one of the reasons. Is, in, is, is, these are the reasons of uh, non-viability because of which, in the last almost two years, you see virtually ATM rollout has I mean, come to a standstill. The reality is that you need a lot of ATMs in the small towns and semi-urban areas, uh, villages, etc. But uh, the rollout is just not happening, and we believe that this is going to hamper the entire financial inclusion program at some some level. Sure, sure. Uh, but uh, okay. So, uh, what about the underlying economics of ATMs? Because, uh, as far as we know, you know, with digitized, uh, with you know, sort of digital money picking up in a in a bigger way, uh, say the utility rates per ATM seem to be coming down, or at least are not growing as fast as possible. Uh, can you give us a sense of, say, rural and urban? What are the break-even points and where we are at uh, compared to those break-even points? So, you know, if you really look at it at a global level, uh, post, if you really back off the demonetization period of about uh, six to eight months, uh, the transactions at the ATMs are growing. I mean, so today the cash in circulation has reached almost about 20 lakh crores. 
uh, and the transactions uh, done by retail consumers uh, at the ATM points has only gone up. Uh, so I, I don't think that the demand is a worry. Uh, however, the supply side is not happening because the economics are not making sense. Uh, uh, so uh, while digital will continue to grow, we believe uh, cash has come back in full, full circulation. And especially as you go into the small towns and villages, the entire economy depends on cash. Uh, so over there, uh, uh, you know, unless you go and put up more ATMs, you, 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 you know, we've given out a lot of uh, debit cards through PMJDY, the, the, the Pradhan Mantri Jan you know, Yojana, and then there's a lot of money now going. All the subsidies are now going in the form of bank transfer. Uh, and, and if you don't, so the demand is there. If you, on the supply side, if you don't put more ATMs, uh, you know, this whole program is going to uh, uh, you know, come to us. But, but if you want to put more ATMs, obviously it needs to be a viable mechanism for the operators like us uh, who will need to sort of put up ATMs. All right. Just last question, Mr. Srinivas. Uh, so, uh, where where are the negotiations at? Uh, I know you've sought uh, you know relaxations from the RBI, but surely uh, you see the regulators' interest in uh, you know ensuring maximum security. Uh, perhaps the solution lies in some sort of an agreement between banks and the ATM industry, or maybe some attempt from the government to subsidize part of this, because it's very tough to argue that you shouldn't have tougher security at a time of rising frauds. No, I think you know uh, none of us is saying that some of these measures are uh, which are announced are not required. I think they are definitely required, uh, but there is a cost of putting putting those uh, you know measures in, and I think uh, people will have to bear the cost. I mean, you know, you, you can't expect uh, operators to bear these costs and then be happy about it. Uh, and you know, it's, it's obviously because it's not viable. So we've reached out to RBI, we've reached out to NPCI, we're, re we're reaching out to the Ministry of Finance. And we hope that some solution actually is uh, you know, uh, coming forward in the near future.